In this video, I'll be talking about virtualization using TrueNAS scale. The basic functionality of the TrueNAS is the NAS, but at the same time, you can also use the virtualization using the hypervisor. So your CPU must support the hypervisor in order to start creating the virtual machines. Of course, applications can be installed even if the virtualization is not supported by the CPU. I'm using Zima Blade and I have explained you how you can install TrueNAS on Zima Blade. And now the TrueNAS is already available. So let me show you step by step how we can do it, including the storage and ISO and even the VM installation. And I'll explain you also the reason why one should go for the TrueNAS and why one should not go for TrueNAS when it comes to the hypervisor. TrueNAS scale right now is running. Of course, I'm using the Zima Blade. If you want to know the details of Zima Blade, I have provided the link in the description. This is, of course, sufficient for the uh, NAS storage and it has its own NAS storage components also, hardware components that can be used for the TrueNAS. Right now, if I take you to the storage options, of course, we can directly go here to the virtualizations on the left side and I can create a virtual machine from here. But to manage the virtual machines in a better way, we must create the storage first. We must create the specific storage for the virtual disk. And then we must also create the specific storage for the ISO images. So where your ISO images will be stored, where the virtual disk will be stored. So you have to create that as well. I have one SSD, which is addition to primary storage where the operating system is installed. And in addition to that, I have added the SSD here, which is 500 GB. So what we are going to do here, we are going to create a data set inside the SSD. Primary path is uh, SSD and I'll be giving it a name, for example, ISO underscore images and I'll name it ISO images. So we'll inherit everything. Everything will be fine. We'll just save it here. So you will see here that it has created one folder inside the SSD, which is ISO images. At the same time, I'll also create another data set, which will be uh, inside SSD. In fact, here parent path is SSD. Inside SSD, I will be creating virtual disks. So it is virtual disks. And here we go. So access control is inherit right now. So I'll just save it. You can see here that now these two paths are created inside the SSD. So any storage that you'll be having, you can create these both paths here. I have the ISO images, one uh, data set and another data set, which is inside the SSD is virtual disk. So it is for the better management. So we'll go here now into virtualization. And in virtualization, you can see here right now, there is no virtual machine added. So we can click here, add virtual machine, or we can click here on top and we'll add the virtualization. So what will be the guest operating system? Guest operating system, for example, I'll install Windows 10 over here. And then in case you want to enable the Hyper-V compatibility, you can also do that. I will leave it default right now. I won't be changing that. Here I'll be creating Windows 10 and tutorials. Windows 10 YouTube tutorial. And system clock will be local and boot method, either you want to use the uh, legacy or UEFI, I'll be using UEFI here. And whether you want to start at boot, right now I don't want to start at boot, it will be just for the tutorial purpose. Uh, so once I complete this, I will be just leaving. Here, enable display, I will just uh, do that. Uh, enable display and then bind to which network. So we'll be binding it to the network, which is 192.168.240.5. Here you can enter the password next. Now, the next thing is the CPU and memory. So operating system is done. So CPU and memory will be uh, virtual CPUs are two cores. We can add up to maybe two cores. Rest everything you can leave default and CPU mode, whether it is custom or you can choose the host model. I will use host model here. Uh, resources, otherwise there are various other also. You can uh, choose custom. So it depends if uh, your operating system is supporting some specific CPU, you can use that. Otherwise, I'll choose any random CPU from here. Use the memory, 4 GB RAM is enough. Otherwise, if you want to uh, use 8 GB or any other, so you will use 8 G. I'll be using 4 G here. So it will be 4 GB and then you will click next. And then you will see here disks. So whether you want to create a new disk, if you already have the virtual disk that you want to attach here, that can be also done. Otherwise, we'll be using create a new disk and select disk type. I'll use the default one, AHCI, the location of the virtual disk. So I'll be choosing from here 
the SSD virtual disk. 40 GB is the disk size, which is fine. I'll be just clicking next. Then is the network. These are two different type of drivers uh, which can be installed. So I'll be using Vertio. It will automatically give you the MAC address. You can change the MAC address of your choice. A network interface card, which will be working as a bridge. And then once you click next, it will ask you for the installation media. You can choose the installation media if it is already there in your SSD ISO images. Otherwise, you can upload the new ISO image. So I'll be uploading it to SSD and inside SSD, I'll be uploading it to ISO images and choose the file. So it will be Windows 10 and upload. All right, so ISO image has been uploaded already. Now you can see here that the installation media, which was there, this is Windows 10 installation media click next then whether you want to use the gpu or not zima blade has the graphics card which can be used as a gpu so as we have only one gpu right now we won't be able to use that because host is already using that at least one gpu is required for the host so we won't be using any gpu now we have to confirm that everything is fine the moment we save of course it will create the virtual machine its state is stopped right now whether you want to auto start or not you can do that here we can expand this and it will show you all the details here. Everything is fine here. So we can see once again, if I click on edit, all the details are here. First VM details, boot method is UEFI. You can also try for legacy BIOS also in case uh, you are looking for that. Uh, virtual CPUs, CPU modes, either you can use the host pass through or you can use the host model or even you can use the custom. So I'll use host model here and uh, the memory size is 4 GB, which is fine. GPU I won't be uh, using as I have mentioned that there is only one graphics card which is dedicated for internal uh, Zima blade. So I'll just save it here. Everything is fine here. I'll just click on start and now the virtual machine will start. You will just click here on the display. So it will display the screen here. Here you have to enter the password that you had set up to access the machine. Escape in one second to start. I'll just edit this and it will show me the BIOS. Here is the boot device manager. So device manager and boot device manager. So I'll be choosing uh, DVD-ROM. So I'll be using DVD here. And here you go. Windows 10 installation has started. All the information, I'll just install it here. Here you can see 40 GB hard disk is detected. Installation has started and it will of course complete and then we can start using the virtual machine in TrueNAS. So whether you should go for TrueNAS for the virtualization or not, I will not recommend you to use TrueNAS for the virtualization because of various reasons. First of all, the high availability option is not there. Uh, cluster environment is not there. The backup and restore is not that flexible in this. I will recommend you to use the Proxmox for the virtualization and use the NAS storage purely for NAS. And of course, then you can use the containers for specific applications. For example, sync thing or Nextcloud. These are great features if you use that in TrueNAS. And also there are some applications that if you are using it for the streaming server and so on, because all your files are already stored on TrueNAS. They use the TrueNAS for the file storage or backup or the containerized application. But for virtualization, only use it if you have some specific application that you want to have the access to the storage. For example, if you are using any Windows file server and you want to pass through the storage which is available on TrueNAS, you can use that. So I'll continue the installation and I'll complete that. What was your experience of using virtualization on TrueNAS? You can mention in the comment section below. In case you are looking for the Proxmox virtualization, I have also provided you the link in the description where you can learn complete virtualization using Proxmox. So hope you like this video. See you next video. Take care and goodbye.